Howdy, y'all. Today, we're going to talk about thread pull rejections. So uh, requests can be rejected client side um, under a form of back pressure from the Elasticsearch cluster. This is frequently seen in ingestion, but can obviously happen for ingestion or search or potentially other uh, situations coming up. So um, frequently, three groups of issues occur together. You can have rejected tasks, you can have circuit breakers, and you can have indexing pressure if it is ingestion. Um, for this video, we're just going to focus on thread pool. So it's going to be a quick video. Um, so cat thread pool is pulling off of node stats. Uh, it would be under the thread pool path. Uh, so because it falls under node stats, that means it's going to be incrementing um, from the node uptime. So if nodes restart, those stats are going to reset. Um, but when you are checking your cluster to see if it is having a uh, thread pool uh, errors, um, we're just going to pull it once, wait a couple of seconds, and pull it again. So for our purposes, uh, we have drastically induced the number of write thread pool rejections. So for our example, we're going to go kind of investigate and see like how could this happen. Um, forewarning, y'all are probably expecting it. In order to even get the example to occur, I had to commit a bunch of cardinal sins. So let's do it. So under thread pools, we'll see for the right queue that it by default has a queue size of 10,000. That is quite high. <laughs> um, in order to induce errors, um, what I had to do, which is possible and highly not recommended, is I overrode that queue size. And you guys can see I overrode it to one. For on-prem clusters, obviously, you can override this to whatever you want. Um, if, for example, you overrode it higher than 10,000, again, confirming not recommended, um, you would likely see resource strain and instead be investigating a CPU or heap issue um, rather than investigating a queue size. So this is definitely there to protect the cluster. In order to induce errors, I definitely overrode that to something crazy small <laughs> um, in order to get it to show. So what I ended up doing, you're going to see a whole bunch of um, Python tests running here, and all of them are infrequently hitting uh, that rejection message. That rejection message, I'm just going to search for Q, uh, tells you Q tasks. Um, this one hit three. I think I lowered it even further later down to one. Yeah, so this Q task is one. So I'm just going to keep like re-kicking those off so that we get more rejected. So these are just going to be running in the background. And then we can see here, as I'm looking through, when I'm pulling cat uh, thread pools, I'm receiving more rejections. So let's talk about the next grouping. Um, common reasons we see this. Uh, and I can definitely say under that rejected task, it tells you, like, you should go check for backlog tasks. Um, if I open this page, it's going to tell us, like, you would normally be expecting to see a hot threads issue. You would be expecting to see cats backlog or sorry, I said cats, tasks, backlog, um, and or like potentially just experiencing general node syncing issues. So let's go look at um, these first two. So under node hot threads, common reason we end up seeing um, these being elevated is, let me show you under dev tools, um, some of these would be having a a painless or a grok or some type of ingest pipeline um, running that's very expensive. Um, my example here is it's literally just trying to effectively induce a sleep timer. Again, demonstration purposes only. Um, just trying to find something a little bit expensive um, that is a custom script that would be running. Uh, so this is just updating a single doc um, and is just doing something a little bit more expensive than it would need to. So that's an example. Um, while that painless script is running, it would show under node hot threads. You can obviously see here, even with my demo, that example is way too short. Um, like this response is coming back <laughs> so fast. Uh, so that is, oops, wrong tab. That is an example of what node hot threads would be. And then secondly, for um, the tasks or for cat tasks, uh, usually you would start by looking at tasks or cat tasks and decide what type of tasks were piling up. Um, the piled up tasks, for example, if they're bulk would relate to the right queue, and if they're search would relate to the search queue. Um, based on which tasks are backing up, you would go investigate further. So spoiler for our Python process that is inducing these write uh, rejections, um, I 
committed the cardinal sin of it's not actually a bulk test. So in my Python script, um, I ended up saying like, just do an individual doc write for each one of those events. Um, so Elasticsearch as a system is more HTTP bound than it is disk write bound. And so by preference, you're going to want to uh, group document writes uh, multiple into one batch, which is why it starts talking about batch size and everything. Very common across all databases. Um, again, people newer to the system don't necessarily know that. And so they go and update each doc individually um, or create each doc individually. And if you do that, you're very likely um, to hit this problem as you start scaling load in production. So again, um, if we receive rejected tasks, they're gonna be piling up in that cat thread pool. Here we can see we're just continuing to increment. Um, let's say that we had these rejected tasks and we wanted to know if they were uh, incrementing and this didn't increase, if our situation was fully resolved or if it was threshold, um, but not actively pinging. Uh, after enabling logs and metrics and or Elasticsearch monitoring under stack monitoring, we would go into a node. Um, my master node is also a data hot node, so I'm just gonna pick this one at random. Um, under advanced, I'm gonna look for write queue. So here we can see this is my write queue and this blue line tells me the number of write rejections I'm having over time. So this would tell me pretty distinctly for this last 15 minutes that my problem is ongoing. If I was looking historically, I could um, see if this line ends up going to zero that like I had a blip and it's resolved, um, but it is not ongoing. Um, as far as I know, there isn't anything Elasticsearch log side that informs you um, of which ingest targets this was attempting. And so in this circumstance, this is when it's pretty important uh, for your client side to have like back off and retries and retry on timeout. So all of the things you're going to want to have in consideration, but again, highlighting like you uh, generally resolve this uh, the same way you do your index tuning by confirming your bulk size, uh, confirming your refresh interval, and then just watching how many workers are working in parallel. So to that extent, this is exactly how you go investigate a max thread pool and start that investigation for your task queue backlog. Thankfully, quick video, uh, quick investigation. Awesome. Thanks all.